Hello, welcome to my channel, Soulful Spinning. This is my channel about my crafty life. My name is Lisa and I'm coming to you from just outside of Chicago in the Midwest of the US. Uh, it's about the 21st of December, 2022 today. Uh, we're expecting a big snowstorm coming up for Christmas. So I'm kind of excited about having a white Christmas. So I thought I'd pop in here and wish you all a very happy holiday if you celebrate and just to share with you a few of the things that I've been working on. So the first thing I've been working on is a Lopi sweater, Lopi Pesa sweater. And this is how far I've gotten so far on this one. I'll put the name of the pattern um, on the screen here. Uh, I think her name is Judy Trude and it's a just a traditional uh, uh, Lopa Pesa sweater that's knit with two strands. I'm using two strands of um, Plutolopi held together. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the two plates. These are the two colors I'm using. I think this they call this like desert rose but oh, it's so pretty. It's, it's like uh, Princess Leia here. <laughs> So um, it's this beautiful rose color. It just made my, my little in, uh, inner child heart sing when I saw this color. Uh, I got this from websyarn.com uh, online here and they had a big they had a sale, so it was pretty reasonably priced. So anyway, uh, what I'm doing is I'm taking my two plates. It's an unspun yarn, so it's, you guys, if you've been watching any podcasters at all, um, there's been a huge interest in this kind of yarn. I think ever since uh, Nutidin came out, um, people are knitting it with Plotilopi, there's Manchilopi, and there's other uh, maker, you know, other brands that are coming out because it's really popular. This is the first time I've ever knit with Plotilopi, and I love it. I... Um, I had started a sweater last year that's in hibernation out of Letlopi. <clears throat> and I thought Letlopi uh, is a beautiful yarn, but it, it, it's kind of scratchy. And as I was knitting it, it started like getting an abrasion on my finger. I know it'll soften up when I wash it and everything. But this is a totally different experience because it doesn't have the spinning oils. It's just this a thin roving. And... Oh, it smells like sheep in the best of ways. So, so far, I have a whole sleeve done. Oh, this is the traditional. So I'm knitting one of the sleeves, and now I'm working on the body of the, of the sweater here. I'll sit and knit for a little bit here. I hear somebody stirring upstairs. So. So I'm really enjoying this yarn quite a bit. I was inspired to come back and do a video because um, uh, some of my, my favorite podcasters are putting out some really good content these days. I actually found a new, uh, a new person to listen to. His name's David Vandekamp, and I heard about him on uh, Irena Shar's uh, Fiber Chats video. He's a good friend of hers, and uh, <laughs> he uh, lives in Serbia, uh, and he is such a gentleman and really fun to listen to. So <clears throat> he's doing a lot for promoting um, the heritage uh, uh, breeds of sheep in Serbia and just the, the heritage crafts there. In one of his videos, he um, shows how to spin with a wand and a distaff that he inherited from, I think, a great, a great grandmother. Um, so he's really, he's, I just discovered him and uh, he's actually really delightful. He is, uh, his channel is The Knitting Diaries. He's got a, um, he just started doing like sit down podcasts. He's, he's um, but he also has a 
Instagram account that's really fun to watch. He's very dramatic and, um, and charming. So uh, I highly recommend you check him out. He's uh, f- fairly new to the, the, the podcast uh, universe. So uh, actually, he has a, jump, a pattern called Icarus Shawl. And it's made out of many, many colors of his uh, old world yarn, I think he calls it. Um, but I was thinking I could do it with a bunch of my spindle spun sc- scraps. It's called the Icarus Shawl, and it's like a side to side, multicolored, uh, beautiful, uh, beautiful pattern. So, and he actually has a sale on his patterns right now. So, I'm going to go over there and I think I'm going to purchase that pattern and uh, see what I can come up with out of my stash. Yeah, so we are gearing up for our little tiny Christmas here uh, in my neck of the woods. So yeah, so this is really going quite swiftly. I do hope that it'll fit me. Um, I'm getting 14 stitches per inch on this on a US 9, which is a 5.5 millimeter needle. And I cast on for the medium size. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to knit up about 42 centimeters, I think, here. And then I'm going to attach one of the sleeves. And then I'm going to knit the other sleeve and then do the fun part, the color work. So um, it's going quite fast and it's quite an enjoyable knit. So I, this is not my first Lopa Pesa that I'm going to be making for sure. As a matter of fact, I have yarn for another sweater. Um, pattern. I found another designer on uh, Ravelry. Her, she's Nanook. Uh, dot S A S A N A N O K. I'll I'll put everything I talk about. I'll put in the links below. But she's got a, a really uh, cool jumper made out of Aran weight. It's called I think it's called Wintervind, and it's a red and and cream colored. Well, the her pattern. She did it in a uh, red and a cream. It's got sort of a heart motif. And I'm going to make mine out of this Donegal yarn here. This is Taki Yarns uh, Donegal Tweed Hand uh, Homespun, it's called. And the two colors are, well, it doesn't have a shade name. It's M680. It's a beautiful, rich red. And then this one. Uh, which is da, 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 M's no. Oh, that was a lot number. This is a shade. I think it, I think she, they call it oatmeal on the web. So I have enough for that for that sweater. I'll insert a picture of the of the uh, of the jumper here, and uh, you can get a, have a look at it. Again, that's another bottom up uh, bottom up sweater. You, you, know, you knit up and then you knit the the yoke. I was watching um, Daki, another uh, beautiful woman on uh, YouTube. She's got wool in the forest. So if you if you follow knitting podcasts, I'm sure none of these names are foreign to you. But she was talking about uh, knitting jumpers bottom up, and how just the structure of the knit stitch is wider on the bottom. So to her, it made a lot of sense to to go bottom up. So I thought that I would try a couple, a couple of that style and see, you know, see how I like, how I like the construction. All right. That, oh, so that's really all I've been working on in terms of uh, uh, whips. I uh, am uh, going to really concentrate on that Lopa Pesa uh, jumper before, you know, spring comes and I won't have a need for it. But I do have a few finished objects that I wanted to share with you. Um, one of them's out of hand spun. I just finished these the other night. And uh, they're muckluck. Um, here, I'll show you. Very Christmassy. <laughs> these are the muckluck slippers by Diane Sush or Susi, uh, Knitting Pure and Simple on Ravelry. This is the third pair I've made. And this was a languishing whip. I had one, uh, one slipper almost finished, and the other one uh, started. And I just uh, I picked it up. I thought it would be nice for the holidays to have a pair of red slippers. 
So it's this is a really fun pattern. It's real easy. Um, it's nothing really fancy. The you you knit the the bottom flat with these rapid increases around here, and then you shape you shape the the toe, and then you start knitting in the round, and then at the end I just whip stitch the seam down here, which which was really easy to do, and um, I really gave it a good strong seam because I have another pair that. Uh, kind of started fraying right where the seam was. So I made sure that I, I did a really strong seam. I just finished a piece from Stephen West and Stephen West has some good suggestions on how to weave in your ends using a whip stitch. And I think it's a very secure way of weaving in your ends. So I'm pretty excited about these little slippers. They're all out of hand spun. This is, I think this is like a Coriadale I picked it up from a fiber festival um, some time ago, but it's kind of like a medium wool and it's a three ply yarn. And then the white is a three ply Coredale. So I was thinking I should probably put little pom poms on it or maybe embroider some holly on there if I felt like it. I felt that would be fun. We'll see. So what else? So uh, the main knitting project that has taken up my time uh, this fall is this ridiculous concoction <laughs> I guess you but you can guess what it is <laughs> this is uh, this was the mystery knit along the twists and turns mystery knit along uh, by by Stephen West it has not been blocked yet and uh, I knit mine I'll get you some close-ups here. It's very, very long. I didn't do the center part. I did the early, uh, early bind-off option. So I knit this out of his West Wool yarn and the colors were white birch and tiger pop I think I don't want to get the sound messed up with my microphone but it kind of uh, um, I have mixed feelings about this it was loads and loads and loads of fun to knit it was very challenging for me to knit. There was lots of, uh, I learned, I learned a ton um, making this, uh, just picking up stitches and uh, short rows, um, cabling without a cable needle. I mean, there's just a lot of, a lot of skills that I learned. And what I, I think I liked about this is that it was, uh, it never was boring. I mean, the middle, the middle part was, a little tedious, but uh, which these braids here, you've, you've seen this, I'm sure, if you've been following. I'll, I'll put the, uh, the link to all the yarns. Again, anything I talk about, I put in the description. I did a couple, the only really modifications I made was when I did the, this beautiful cable section. I held it with a strand of a Rowan Kid Silk a mohair. And I think it's just, a, it makes it nice and uh, very, very, gives a weight to the bottom of the shawl. It's just very fuzzy and, and really luscious. And then I also held, along with this section here, I held some um, mohair silk, I think from Barocco. And it also gave a little bit more uh, structure to these edges. I mean, I haven't even blocked it yet and it's not curling too badly. So the only thing is, is I was done with it. I was weaving in my ends and I was folding it up. You know, I got to wash it and block it and everything. <laughs> and uh, so I'm folding it up, you know, and I'm like, what is going on? Why, why is this wing so much longer? than the other. 
a couple inches. Well, it turns out I forgot I was supposed to do an extra half repeat of the cable chart on this side and I didn't do it. So this one wing is a little shorter than the other. But if I if I want to fix it, I have to undo this. Of course, I have to rip it back and undo it. And frankly, I'm so done with this pattern. Um, so I'm going to, I think I'm going to wash it, block it. Really, I don't even think I'm going to wear it that much. So it doesn't really matter if one of the sides is shorter than the other. <laughs> but uh, I'll put it on for you, show you a couple of ways that I've seen it styled here. But it is kind of a ridiculous uh, a shawl here. Get in your coat like this and keep it nice and toasty. Yeah, it's it's funny. <laughs> my, my husband said, he goes, "What is the concoction?" <laughs> and I'm like, I, "I don't know. It's it's a mystery, no long." And he's like, "Aren't you going to be done with that pretty soon?" <laughs> so I just I just finished it this last week, but it did jumpstart my um, my knitting mojo, and I was really proud that I actually completed the shawl. Um, yeah, I was thinking of putting tassels on here, but um, it really would look like a lampshade then. So I am. Um, I think I'm. I think I'm going to call this done. Uh, you know, just needs a block. I, I'm. I don't think I'm going to do anything else <laughs> with it. <laughs> yeah. So it kind of reminds me of tiramisu, like a frilly, frothy dessert or something. So yeah, it was great fun. And I am proud that I, I actually finished the shawl. <laughs> I don't know. I think next year I'm going to wait till the first couple clues come out. And then I'll decide if I want to make it or not. Uh, I have to say, when I first started, I was feeling really kind of sad about my color choices because everybody had these just beautiful, dynamic, you know, contrasty, uh, you know, variegated and everything. And I had sort of this dull, you know, not very much contrast. But I actually think it was good because I, I, those ones that are highly contrasty are, are not my favorites. There's one lady that made it out of pure white and she just used just different texture yarns and it was absolutely beautiful. So, yes. 
Stephen West, a brilliant designer, and uh, he had a big sale, and I purchased, I think I purchased a course of his and some more of his patterns to knit in the new year. So yeah, so I finished that, and uh, one other thing I was going to show you is this little shawl, scarfy thing I made. So this is just a simple scarf. Uh, this is a pattern by Ann Hansen. Um, let me have a sip of water. I think it's called hypotenuse uh, because it really made my uh, my math teacher's heart happy. It has this um, right triangle here, so she called it hypotenuse. And this yarn I purchased at uh, we have a, a local like a farmer's market, not too far from where we are. And there was a lady selling uh, American alpaca merino yarn. So it's 70% alpaca and 30% merino. And just blocked beautifully, as you can see. So yeah, this is the, there's two uh, sizes for this piece. There's the shawl and then there's the, the scarf. And it's nice because it's uh, it looks nice on both sides. And I think it would make a really sweet baby blanket if you extended out the number of stitches cast on. So I finished that. Not a lot to show, <laughs> but, <laughs> but there you have it. That's 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 the extent of it. Uh, of course, I've started things and uh, you know put them on the wayside. So. My New Year's resolution is to have more stick to and work on fewer projects so that I can actually have things, uh, more things done. Famous last words, right? Yeah, and I think what I'm going to do is go through all the things that I have cast on. I have a bunch of whips tucked away here and there, and I think I'm going to pull them all out and just do an assessment and see if any of them are worth my time to complete. Maybe I'll, that would be a, a fun video. Would you be interested in seeing that? It'd be embarrassing, but um, I think it might be a little fun to do that. All right, so the only other thing I really wanted to talk about was my spinning. Again, I haven't been doing a ton of spinning and knitting. Um, that I've been working on that. Um, that shawl and I did finish my hand spun socks I think I'll show those to you next time I record uh, I did get a box in the mail of uh, a mixed uh, sampler of different breeds of sheep and there are a dozen in there and then I, I bought a, uh, an extra like a bonus and I thought my, I might do this over the Betwixtmas time, you know, the time on Boxing Day to Epiphany. I thought maybe I'd do a quick daily vlog of, of a, a different breed of sheep, you know, kind of like the 12 days of Christmas, but the 12 breeds of Christmas. Uh, and uh, one of them I, is North Ronaldsey. And I, I actually purchased a, a bump of the North Ronaldsey separate from the sampler. Here's the card. I'll talk about this more in my uh, in my little uh, uh, series. Um, but I thought I would just. This is so beautiful. Um, I'll talk more about North Ronald Z later on. But it's so soft. It's a dual coated uh, breed, and they I guess they live on seaweed. And look at this prep here. Uh, it's almost, you know, it's almost like that unspun. You could, you could actually knit with this. Maybe, maybe split it in half and make your own plutilope type thing. So I've been uh, doing some sampling with this. Uh, they just must have done a fantastic job taking out the guard hairs because this is so incredibly soft and smells wonderful. So I've been spinning this on my uh, one of my support spindles here, and because the sh the sheep live on seaweed, I thought I would use my little shell 
for my, my surface. And uh, so I'm having a lot of success spinning uh, this fleece, uh, this fiber on a uh, sports bundle because the fiber is real, uh, real short, like the undercoat must be very, very short. And when I was trying to spin it on my drop spindle, which I'll show you here, I have it here, it, it keeps breaking. So it's, it's spinning quite thin. This is, oh, spindles, right? wouldn't be an episode of Soulful Spinning if I didn't talk about spindles. Uh, this is a new spindle to me. Get out of the frame here so you can see it. This is uh, from Spindlewood. And I think this one is Holly. Oh, how appropriate. Holly, it's Holly for Christmas, right? <laughs> so I got this one and then I purchased another one from him. The again, the maker is uh, Steve Paulson. And I bought these too. I just I picked these up this summer. This one's made out of holly, like I said before, and this one is apple. So it's like a very. I wanted two very very light uh, spindles. And uh, beautiful, beautiful spindle maker. The best way to uh, get a spindle is just to email Connie, which I think Connie's his wife, and she manages all the orders and just. You, know, you can look at their catalog, or if you have an idea of what you might want, um, he will make you a bespoke uh, spindle just for you. So, <sighs> yeah. So I was, I had some success, uh, but as the spindle's getting heavier, I'm noticing that I'm having more, it breaks more because it's a very short staple. So spinning it on the uh, support spindle seems to be doing a little bit better. Um, you know, better job of it. Yeah, so that's that. And then what else have I been spinning? Um, I've also been spinning some silk. Uh, this is some Tussa silk that I have in my stash. I purchased it from Ruth McGregor on online. She uh, lives in France. I bought this a long time ago. This is just a tuss of silk. And I'm spinning this on this spindle right here. I'll show you the card. Green sleeve spindles here, sorry. Green sleeve spindle. This is a box elder burl and a birch shaft, and it's all of 0.4 ounces. So it's very, very beautiful and very light. So, yeah, I'm just, uh, you know, spinning this while we watch TV or whatever. Yeah, I know you like to watch. It's a very fast spin, spindle. And it gives you a lot of twist very, very quickly. So it's perfect for the silk. I have a little bit of a larger larger clump than I should probably. Usually, I usually split it in half or even uh, fourths and then spin it from there. So yeah, I don't want to get all this messed up here. Yeah, I don't know if if Ruth sells this uh, this anymore. Um, she sells like two packs of beautiful silk. I'll, I'll put the link below, but I I don't I don't know if her shop is still uh, is still in operation. But I got a bunch of different colors. Like uh, this is like a green and a and a beautiful blue. What else? What else? What else that I can do? I don't want to keep you too long here. Yeah, so there's there's other things that have been going on. I don't I don't want to make this too long. Just wanted to pop in and and say hello. And um, I do have plans for the new year. I um, I'd like to 
record more often if, if I can. And, um, oh, there's one other thing I wanted to talk about. Uh, speaking of Stephen, speaking of Stephen West, he does this hyper knit along every winter starting on the 26th of December. And the shawl this year is called the Aurora, the Aurora shawl, I think. And I went into my stash and I found the perfect yarn for this pattern. So, so I'm going to knit the hyper knit along out of this. This was a find your fade kit. Here. This was a find your fade kit from a shop online. And I think it was in Switzerland, made in Switzerland. It's 50% silk, 50% merino. And I, I bought the kit and I never made the shawl. And I actually went so far as to wind up several of the colors. So I will insert, actually I'll insert some video here of, of the colors. And I think it's gonna make a really, really pretty <clears throat> going to make a really pretty hybrid knit along shawl. Hey Peaches, you looking at all the fibery stuff? Yeah. She's, she's smelling my basket. Smells like a sheep, doesn't it? Doesn't it smell like a sheep? <laughs> and there's a tan. I was thinking of casting out with this color. Light green and then there's a beautiful blue. What do you think guys? You think this would make a nice Aurora shawl? I think so. I think it'd be beautiful. So those are four of the colors here. It's very beautiful. Here's another shades of green. Pretty. And then I've got our dark here. The colors are showing up really nice here. And then I'm going to throw in, I think, I might throw in some brown. This is from Julie Spins. It's, it's a 50-50 merino silk also. So I thought, you know, you need darks and lights, I think, to be a really effective. Oops, sorry, Peaches just walked by the camera uh, and shook it a little bit. So I'm thinking of casting that on and joining the fun. I was happy that I could find yarn out of my stash. I, uh, you know, I got way too much stash. I, I was looking online for kits and stuff, and I thought, you know, I think I have some beautiful yarn for that. So yeah, so yay me, gonna use stash, shopping my stash for a new project. All right, well with that, I think I'm just gonna leave you uh, with a little bit of um, uh, video of uh, me doing some crafty things, a little spinning, uh, a little knitting. And I'll show you some close-ups to some of my projects. Uh, I do hope you're all very well. I hope you're uh, safe and warm wherever you are. And you have a very happy holiday. And I will see you again very soon uh, after Christmas. Take care, everybody. And thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. What you... I've got you on video. Well, saving lives. Saving lives. Bird lives. Oh, nice shoes. Yeah, I got your shoes. <laughs> <laughs> it is coming down. Did you already fill up the feeder? Yep. Come on, Peaches. Let's get busy. <gasps> getting cold. You can feel the temperature just dropping from earlier today. You like the snow peaches?
probably want to go in the house, huh? <laughs> Oh, it is cold. <laughs> yep, blizzard conditions. Blizzard conditions. We're ready. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Cyclone bombs. <laughs> Ready? Oh boy. We scared the birds from their feeder peaches. snow this morning. Not too much snow, but bitter, bitterly cold. Yeah, so my husband's got the feeders up for the birds. Oh yeah, it's bitter. My hands are starting to freeze. <laughs> I've been out here for 30 seconds. Let's go inside and have a cookie and a cup of coffee, right? Cookie for you and coffee for me. Go on. tree. I think it's perfect. Our boar. It's beautiful. Watch that saw. Oh yeah, sorry. Oh, it's really sweet. Beautiful. It's perfect. What do you think, Peaches? Do you like it? All right. <laughs> 